Last year, Greg from LaserBear released the LCD CRT kit, a way to take high-resolution tablet screens and put it into a case resembling a CRT. The lag was measured at just a few milliseconds, and the smaller form factor made it great for a dedicated retro monitor. Now that the RetroTank 5X and Mr. both have realistic CRT scanline filters and native support for the panel's 1536p resolution, I wanted to see how close the LCD CRT comes to the real thing. Okay, we absolutely have to start with a few disclaimers here. First, shooting video of any display, especially CRTs, in a way that represents it how your eyes would see is absolutely impossible with the equipment I have access to. So please don't interpret this as some definitive comparison. It's not. This is just a fun way to give you sort of an idea of what to expect that may or may not look right depending on compression and the screen you're viewing on. Also, the monitors we're using are a 10-inch LCD and 14-inch CRT, which makes things even more challenging. See, smaller screens jam the same amount of pixels, or scan lines, closer together, making those masks harder to see. This actually works in your favor for early 3D games like you'll find on N64, but makes comparison videos like this even harder to shoot. So basically, this video is supposed to be fun. Don't use it as research material, and certainly don't use it as any CRT versus LCD argument. All right, let's jump in. CRTs work by electron guns firing three beams of light at the phosphors on the back of the glass inside the vacuum sealed tube, one for each of the red, green, and blue colors that combine to make up the image. As we zoom in, the horizontal black lines that appear between the scanned lines of the image start to stand out a bit more. As we get closer, you could also see the vertical mask that, at about normal viewing distance on a Sony tube, often appear as thin, curved vertical lines. If we zoom in with a macro lens, you could start to see each color for each TV line being scanned, showing both the color separation and a better look at the CRT's mask. Professional-grade monitors like this have more of these individual lines drawn, allowing for a lot more detail to be shown on screen. These lines, or the mask, also have an interesting side effect. They cut through the low resolution graphics in a way that gives it a sense of much higher resolution. While this is subjective, sometimes I prefer CRTs with a lower TV line count so I could see more of the mask at a normal viewing distance, while other times I prefer higher TVLs so the mask practically disappears, blending the image together. In comparison, here's the tablet screen with the image nearest neighbor integer scaled eight times its horizontal size and seven times its vertical size. As a result, this 256 eight by seven square pixel game is presented in its intended four by three aspect ratio, making this about as perfect of a reproduction as you can get on a flat panel. Yet it looks very different from the CRT. There's no mask to cut through the image and the low resolution graphics look very blocky. As we switch over to a macro lens, we can see how much differently the LCD screen creates the image. Simply by showing this view, it should be apparent how hard it is to create a look on a flat panel that mimics how a CRT's image is drawn. While it'll take panels much higher resolution than this, with perfect black levels and no motion blur to get to true CRT emulation, let's take a look at the new CRT filters the RetroTINK 5X creator Mike Chi recently added. Unfortunately, as usual, I'm getting a bad moray pattern on both displays, making this harder to see, but as we cycle through and choose the option that matches the mask of the 14-inch PVM we're using, you can start to see the filter cut through the image. While on a screen this small, it's really hard to see the vertical mask, just like with smaller CRTs, if we use a macro lens to zoom in, we could see Mike's filters at work. Black lines are drawn across the screen to match the blank spaces on a CRT, and vertical lines are strategically drawn to mimic the CRT's mask. While it's not perfect, it's so much better than what we've had up until this point. So before I go any further and show any more examples, I want to mention one more time that this is just a fun comparison that shows the LCD CRT kit looking closer to a real CRT, and part of that is just barely being able to see the mask at all, just like on small CRTs. 
Someday I'd love to repeat this test with both a 20 inch CRT and a very high resolution 20 inch monitor so we could have a much better sense of the mask recreation. But for now, let's just stick to the point of this video and get back to showing this little LCD kit. Now I'd like to see what we could do with interlaced resolutions, as they're always challenging to work with on flat panels. Here's the CRT first, and while you could sort of see the alternating lines of interlaced video, the flicker isn't really noticeable. I mean, if you grew up with CRTs, this is pretty much how they all looked anyway. If we slow the video down to 25% and start to zoom in, the interlacing starts to become a lot more noticeable. While the CRT's mask is still visible, our persistence of vision blends it together as the lines alternate. This is also why we only really noticed the scan line mask with video games. All TV and movies were shown on the average home CRT as interlaced, so the mask blended together. As we switch to a macro lens and drop to 10% speed, all of this becomes a lot more obvious. I think this is a great way to demonstrate how 480i is drawn on a CRT, and also a great example of how hard it would be to recreate this look on a flat panel. But let's see what we could do. Now let's check it out on the LCD CRT. First, I'll make sure to enable the experimental resolutions, then set the tank to the panel's native resolution. I didn't show that before because I wanted to just jump into the video, but I wanted to make sure to show everybody how to enable this resolution. Another thing I didn't mention before is the LCD backlight's flicker, and I definitely need to point out that it's not this bad in person. Sure, an OLED would be a lot better, but I think what you're seeing is the backlight strobing not lining up with my camera shutter. Anyway, while the RT5X's motion adaptive deinterlacing is doing a good job, I still think there's a lot more we could do. The first thing I always suggest when using a RetroTINK with 3D graphics games is try to toggle the smoothing filter. The results are a bit more subtle with 480i sources, but depending on the game, it might help. I think the scanline filters are really key to capture the look though. And while once again, using smaller screens will result in less of the mask being visible, that's part of the point. The goal is to make the game look more authentic, not to stare at lines across the screen. We'll leave the scan lines at PVM600 to match the CRT we're comparing to, then toggle the filters again. I think the difference is even more subtle with the scan lines on, but let's leave it at smooth. There's a few different deinterlacing options you could try, but I already highlighted these in my RT5X launch video. What I'm really curious to see are the Bob deinterlace specific options. Bob deinterlacing is a method that's very fast, but results in a flicker. But check this out. Mike created a set of scan lines specifically to use with this deinterlacer. Setting it to post adds the scan lines after the deinterlacing, and it results in a look similar to 480p on a CRT. Adding the scan lines pre deinterlacing results in a 240p like look. If you'd like your game to feel more like an 8 or 16 bit original, this is probably the best choice. Check out CRT Simulate though. This alternates the image with each scan line attempting to mimic the same interlacing effect done on a CRT. If your goal is a true 480i CRT look, this is really impressive. Let's check it out side by side next to the CRT, both slowed down to 10% and color corrected to match a bit more. Using the macro lens really showed the differences. I don't think we'll be able to have true 480i CRT emulation that could mimic the three electron guns until four or maybe even eight K scalers come out. As we pull back to a normal lens though, you could see it's very close and certainly a lot more true to the original than just playing on a flat panel with no filtering at all. Earlier I mentioned how I preferred using smaller CRTs with early 3D consoles like the N64. Part of it is what I showed before with how the CRT's mask cuts through the image to make it feel more high resolution, but also because that mask is so small, if you sit just a tiny bit further away, you could barely see it. And to my eyes, this helps blend a lot of early 3D graphics. And depending on the game, using lower TVL consumer CRTs and even composite video might help blend it even more. I actually got this idea from retro YouTube pioneer and arm wrestling champion runner-up Phone Dork, who's been telling us for years to try N64s on smaller CRTs. Now, deciding which CRT to use with which console is completely preference and probably deserves a video of its own, so let's get back to the point of this one. As we switch over to the LCD CRT kit, those blocky 3D graphics really stand out. There's a few things we could try, though. The first thing I always suggest with an N64 is enabling the smoothing filter. 
Different displays will have different results, but it's worth a try. Since this experiment is trying to get the flat panel looking closer to a CRT, the next steps are the CRT filters. As before, I think these do a great job giving it a CRT-like feel. Now, you can enable the smoothing and CRT filters at the same time, but since smoothing requires doubling the resolution, the scan lines will look thinner, like with 480p sources. I suggest trying every combination to see what you prefer. I think the most important thing to note is that none of these settings affect the latency in any way, so honestly, just use whichever looks best to your eyes and don't really worry about anything else. I already showed how the Mr. FPGA project works with the LCD CRT during the last live stream, but there are a few things I'd like to mention in this video. First, the latest Mr. I and I file has support for these tablet screens built right in. Just pop the micro SD card into your computer, change the resolution to number 13, save the file, and reboot your Mr. Then make sure your Mr. is fully updated and launch your favorite core. After your game boots, open the menu, scroll right over to video processing, then hit load preset. Then go to the display specific profiles and select whichever you'd like. You could tweak this to your heart's content, but I think the pre-made profiles are excellent. Now I could spend a whole other video on how Mr. and the new CRT emulation presets look on the screen, but the conclusion is the same. Use whatever looks best to your eyes and there's tons of awesome options now. So there you go, just a fun video about how to take Greg's LCD CRT project and make it look slightly more like a CRT, utilizing both the RetroTINK and Mr.'s latest features. Now, of course, I do want to disclose that I am not sponsored by RetroTINK or LaserBear in any way, and I really just wanted to do this video for my own curiosity and to share my findings with you all. But if you would like to sponsor me, please consider signing up for any of my monthly support services such as Floatplane and Patreon, because it is you who is keeping a lot of this research and development alive, as well as all of the weekly podcasts, the website, and everything else that we do. So anyway, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.